Hello, I'm Becca and I lead the church here at Arran with an incredible team. 300 to 400 of us normally meet at the Little Hampton Academy to worship God and spend time learning together. We are passionate about the Arran area and run a community centre, two early education settings and a cafe. We miss meeting together right now, but we can still meet together, even if that's at home. For now, we are going to continue being together in our own homes, connecting with each other in any way that we can, including these weekly videos. We will keep praying together, including two live streams every month, one here on YouTube and one on our Facebook Connect group. And of course, we will also continue supporting our local community and our partners overseas. We will give help where needed, including financial. So please join with us, get involved, find out more at aaronchurch.com. That's aaronchurch.com. Hey everyone, welcome to Aaron Church Online. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for the service. And we are so excited for what's coming up. Uh, Vanessa, let us know what's coming up. So we have worship, we're gonna to sing together. We have a time for fun and family check-in. I love a family check-in. And we're gonna continue with the topic of a time for change. And this week we're looking specifically at searching or giving up. So Mikey, have you ever had to search for something? It happens more often than you think. So I'm prone to losing my wallet. It happens all the time. I know about where it is. Like mm. it's not like I've left it in town or anything, but it's usually either in the car or in the house or like in a bag somewhere. So I know kind of where it is, but I just misplace it and yeah. it'll turn up somewhere. But yeah, that's the one thing. Vanessa, have you ever been lost? Yeah, so when we first moved down here three years ago, we got told to go for a walk at the Angmering Park Estate and we tried really really hard to find it for about an hour and then we just gave up and then this year we actually managed to find it so only took three years three years <laughs> come on can't get better than that we're just going to worship together now and we're going to hand over to becca 
So morning church, uh, we're gathered here in our living rooms um, and uh, we're coming to worship God. We're looking at to search or to give up searching. The most amazing thing to remind ourselves of today is that God never gives up searching after us. He absolutely loves us. I love that bit in uh, a song that says, there's no shadow he won't light up, no mountain he won't climb up, come in after me. And in that song, it talks about how Jesus is the good shepherd and he leaves 99 sheep in order to find that one lost sheep because he will never give up searching the lost and never give up searching after you. So if you feel lost right now, know that God is searching and running after you. And today we want to search after God and run after Him with all of our hearts today. So thank you, Father, that you are a God who never gives up on us, who never uh, leaves us, who runs after us. And Father, we worship you today. We uh, worship you with everything that we have. Thank you for who you are. Amen.
for my home seat. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. And remember, always like and subscribe to Aaron Church. Hello, we are the Hawkins family. I'm Ed. Martha. Freddie. Jenny. And we are very lucky because we are currently on a half term. Um, so what exciting thing. Hey, Martha, what happened to you yesterday that was exciting? I got a haircut and now and she, and she gave me a braid and I kept it in the last night and now it's still the same. That's cool. And Freddie, what exciting things have you and Martha done that's a bit different from September? Uh, moving to a new school. Yeah, so that's cool. So Fred and Martha now come to my school, which is cool. And Ed, what have you been doing? Uh, I've been working, luckily. There's not been much work around, but I've managed to get a little bit to uh, keep me busy this term. So that's it. Uh, we miss you all. Hope you guys are okay and uh, keeping safe and well. We hope we get to see you again soon. Bye. 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 Morning, everyone. So great to be with you as we continue to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3. My name is Ben and my family have, and I've been part of the church for seven years. So today we're looking at verse six of chapter three, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away. And it's that first line that I wanna focus on. So a time to search. I don't know about you, but it feels to me like the time to search is always. Everyone I know seems to be searching. No one is not searching. As a group of people at a certain point in our history, our way of journeying through life seems to be via a continual cycle of searching, searching for the next, the bigger, the better. We spend so much time searching, dreaming, striving. The new car, the new job, the bigger salary, the better church, the perfect social post, the new kitchen, the best small batch coffee, the new brand of ethical clothing, the better school, and on and on and on. And at a surface level, it all feels insignificant or harmless, just a way to move forward, to progress. But below the surface, this constant searching and striving for what we don't yet have is often rooted in something deeper, something like recognition or the need for control or for belonging or for acceptance. On the surface, we're searching for a new job and a bigger salary, but what we're really searching for is status and recognition. And look, there's nothing wrong in having your bathroom decorated or getting your kids into the right school or going for that new, higher paid job. There's nothing wrong with searching deeper either, exploring what makes us us. Searching is part of our life and part of our culture, but searching for and striving relentlessly for these things and hoping to find for long-term fulfillment, satisfaction, joy, even peace in them, is where I think we're getting in a mess and where I think Jesus is breaking his heart. Because as our searching becomes our future and what we're striving for becomes our reality, we so often find ourselves more and more a slave to things like money or work with less time, less freedom, hemmed in, tired and exhausted, separated from God. And I'm not just talking about what I've seen in others. This relentless search and striving was a large factor in the breakdown I had a few years ago. The constant searching, striving, trying to find greater fulfillment and recognition through work or my church or sports or social media, my marriage, friendships. Not all I was searching for was wrong and my life wasn't bad in any way, but the hope and the expectation that I placed on all these material, superficial things and the level of fulfillment I needed from them was way too high and I had nothing solid to fall back on. So if the searching and the striving is constant, inevitable, sometimes necessary and seemingly ingrained in our cultural DNA, then perhaps the question is we should be asking is not when is the time to search, but how can we search well? How as individuals can we journey through our superficial and fundamental needs, our longings, our desires, and come to the right place? I think part of the answer can be found in how and what we give up, and I'll come, to, come on to that later. But for me, the part of the answer for me can be found in scripture, surprise, surprise, and in our attitudes. So first to scripture, Matthew 6 verse 33 says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you. And Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6 says, trust in the Lord with, 
and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. What I'm learning more and more in my faith journey is that just knowing these passages is not enough, nowhere near. I've got to learn to go beyond the head and the heart knowledge and start to practice them. How in my searching, in our searching and striving, can we start to actually seek God's kingdom view first in our lives? How can we start leaning on his understanding? The words are truth, but the truth can only become reality when we start to live them out. And secondly, my attitude, our attitude. In my journey, I put me at the center and said, God, you tag along. I'll press forward in my own strength and you come along for the ride. I place God in the center of my kingdom rather than placing myself in the center of his kingdom. Again, I don't think I'm alone in this. In the world we live in, the kingdom of the self is the empire we are all encouraged to build. Brand Ben and my needs and my desires are what matters most. Well, look, I think we need to rally against this worldview and try and be people who continually place ourselves and evaluate our search in the values, in the teaching, in the wisdom and the perfection of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So what part does giving up play in all this? Well, I think the challenge of our always on, 24 seven digitally driven world is that slowing down, giving up, stopping is not easy. It can be scary and often it's seen as a negative. Also, there is no way we can spend weeks, months, years going full throttle and expect to be able to give up or stop and then suddenly switch off and hear from God. It's like pushing a child on a roundabout. The roundabout spins and it goes faster and faster and faster and faster until suddenly your child shouts, I want to get off! And they want to get off right now. And if you've ever seen a tri child try and get off a fast moving roundabout, it doesn't usually end well. So you have to slow the roundabout down. And even when they hop off, they often spend a few minutes staggering around trying to reorientate themselves. So over the summer, I read The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer. He's an American pastor and a cultural commentator. The book focuses on four spiritual disciplines or rhythms of life drawn from the life of Jesus. The two that really spoke to me and I think are relevant to our searching and our giving up are Sabbath, and silence and solitude. Sabbath or Shabbat in Hebrew literally means to stop and is something that for the last eight weeks we as a family have been trying to practice. From Friday evening meal to Sunday morning we, Em and I, stop work and by work I mean our paid work and our homework like gardening or cleaning. We put away our mobiles and we try and step off the roundabout, take some time away from the world and focus as a family on God. We use this time to talk to each other, spend quality time with the kids, enjoy our favorite foods, enjoy his creation, basically realign, reset, and change the search terms. And we've by no means perfected this. And at the start, the kids thought we were nuts, but even in the last couple of months, Sabbath has become a treasured part in our week. Slowly but surely, just taking this small amount of time out is changing me and changing M and our family, our perspective, our relationship with God and our relationship with the world. And secondly, silence and solitude. Well, in Matthew 3, we read about Jesus' baptism. And in chapter 4, we read that he is immediately led by the Spirit into the desert. And the Greek word for desert is the eremos, which has multiple meanings. It could mean desert or deserted place or solitary place or quiet place. And what's really interesting for me about this is that the starting place, the ignition point for Jesus' ministry was not the marketplace, but the quiet place, the Eremos. He spent 40 days praying and fasting and gaining the spiritual strength to fight the devil, to send him away and then move out from there into his future. Imagine the fresh, fresh perspective, the realignment, the strength to our search God could give us if we spent more time in the quiet place. And I suppose again the challenge is, how do we begin to practice this? Well, here's four Ansel-inspired starters. Number one, give yourself permission to slow down, to give up, to stop. It's not a weakness, it's the start of your preparation for what's next. Secondly, Em and I have been listening to Lectio 365 in the mornings. It's an app produced by 24-7 Prayer. 
and it helps medita meditative reflection on the Psalms and other passages of the Bible. It only takes 10 minutes per day. Thirdly, we try and carve out an hour during our Sabbath to lie down and listen to God. And look, sometimes we fall asleep or sometimes we just hear Elijah smashing his drums. But like, us, like I said, we're trying to give God the space to speak to us. And fourthly, I'm trying to go out on more walks, trying to be in silence on those walks. No podcasts, no sermons, no music, no calls, just silence. And look, we're on a journey with this as a family, but taking even this small amount of time to slow down, to stop, to give up the day-to-day -day search and strive nature of our culture is already having an impact. So in summary, I believe that searching is part of life, part of who we are in our culture. We're all wired to do it. But maybe now is the point in history where our searching is becoming an overwhelming, over-consuming part of our lifestyle, fueling our surface needs, wants and desires, and becoming the place that we try and find meaning to the deeper searches in our lives. And therefore, we need to make sure that we search well, that we seek first his kingdom. We move from knowing uh, to practicing the teachings of the Bible. We carve out time to intentionally give up and surrender to God. We step off the roundabout, allowing ourselves a Sabbath and some silence and some solitude. And we work hard to place ourselves in God's kingdom rather than trying to make him part of ours. Have a great week, everyone. May God bless you and I hope we'll see you soon.
says in the Bible, keep asking and it will be given to you. Keep searching and you will find. Keep knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who searches finds and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. So we pray uh, for you in your homes right now that if you are knocking on a door that that door would be open to you. If you are searching for God, that you will find him. If you are asking for something, pray that you will be answered. Uh, keep going, keep knocking, keep searching. And uh, I pray that you will search for God with all of your heart, search for what is good and don't give up, but maybe give up on those things that are temporary, that are not eternal, that don't bring you joy eternally. Give up on searching for those things because uh, they're no good for you, but keep going and searching for what is good and what is the real treasure. So Father, I pray that you would give us such clear perspective right now on what we need to give up on and what we need to keep searching for. I pray, Father, that we would know with clarity what those things are. And we pray, God, that you would speak to us right now and that we would know that uh, you never stop searching and running after us. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning. We've had a great time. It's been amazing. And we hope that you've had a great time too. Vanessa, can you tell us some things that are coming up? Yes, so straight after this, we have prayer live stream at 11.15. So please join us for that. And next week we have communion. So get your bread and your wine ready and we'll see you then. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. The vision of the church has not changed. We passionately want to see the good news of Jesus change lives, communities and the world. Our Sunday gatherings have always been marked with the presence of God and we love to pursue Him through worship. 27 years ago, the Cutting Edge events launched a movement of young people praising God and then Delirious took it around the world. Over the past 10 years, Big Church Day Out has been a national expression of our desire to celebrate our Creator through music. And now we are seeing songs of hope come out of our church.
My highlight this year, well, it's always a highlight seeing the um, the church worshiping together and gathering together, and the way we create space at, at Aaron for that is is always wonderful to see. So it's always a highlight. But also, we got to travel a little bit this year with the Kings Village team, and we got invited to the 24/7 uh, Global Conference, which was in Vienna. A very different expression to ours at home, but it was brilliant. Um, and a real privilege to take a little bit of our expression from Aaron out to what they were doing out there and, and be a part of that. So this year, a big highlight for me has been Big Church Day Out. So a few of us from the worship team were given the opportunity as Kings Village to play for some amazing artists, Pat Barrett and Ellie Lyme Bear, worshiping with thousands of people. And it was just such a special moment. I think the, the unique thing about Aaron is its ability to create. So we're not just singing songs that everybody else has sung, but what we are doing is creating music. I would love to see our songs, our, our style of worship impacting the world um, and touching lives and, and seeing people come to, to know God our Father through, through songs, through lyrics, through melodies. The worship at Aaron is really special because there is a lot of freedom for people to just be who they are in God's presence. The impact um, that worship has on me at Aaron is that it has drawn me into a place of surrender and I'm growing all the time. It's wonderful. I think worship is so important because normally we listen to one person, usually from the front, but we can't all join in in a sermon, but worship is completely different because we can be united from the youngest to the oldest. What I think is unique to what we do at Aaron, especially when it comes to worship, is how we intently encourage our young people to get involved when it comes to musical worship, to not only use their own skills and their abilities in playing music, but also to deepen their relationship with God. So a big part of my job role is working with the young people and developing them musically and developing their worship team. It's always been a goal of ours to basically get them to a point where they're running their own events and worship nights and we feel like at Aaron Kids event they achieved this. We do the job really well of raising up young people, we've given them a safe platform to, to get started, to try things in a really safe environment. I feel the church has given me confidence by showing me that people don't necessarily judge you for what you do or how you do it. The worship at Aaron Church for me has just been fantastic because it just completely connects me to God. It's just me, God and the music. I'm really excited about what we could build at Aaron with our worship teams um, from what we've seen go before, but also not just at home, but how we can help go out and facilitate worship in other places. In 2020 and beyond, we're just as passionate about helping people connect with our Heavenly Father in worship using the resources that God has given us. This church is about bringing life to everyone. To everyone. To everyone. Everywhere. Everywhere. Every day. Everywhere.